sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Welcome to another beautiful sermon, brothers and sisters in Christ. We live in a world that is saturated with deception, from the media to the educational system, to the very institutions we are told to trust, the world has become a breeding ground for lies that stand in stark contrast to the truth of God's word. Today we are diving into a subject that may be controversial, but it is crucial for those of us who seek the truth as revealed by the scriptures, the flat biblical earth and the firmament that God created to protect his creation. The world tells us that we live on a spinning globe in an infinite universe, that we are hurtling through space at incredible speeds, and that our planet is just one of many. However, when we return to the Bible, the ultimate source of truth, we find a completely different picture of God's creation. The Bible speaks of a flat, immovable earth, covered by a firmament that divides the waters above from the waters below. This is not just a poetic or metaphorical description. This is a literal account of how God designed the world. Why is this so important? Because the belief in a spinning globe and a universe created by random chance or the Big Bang Theory is directly tied to the false teaching of evolution and the idea that life on Earth is nothing more than an accident. These ideas are originating from Freemason deceptions and designed to pull us away from the truth of the Bible and ultimately from our Creator. John 8.32 tells us, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is the goal of today's message, to set us free from the lies of the world and to stand firm in the truth of God's Word. In this sermon, we will explore the biblical foundation for the flat earth, the deception of NASA and the space program, and how these lies are tied to the false teachings of evolution and the rejection of God's creation. We will also delve into the significance of the firmament, the waters above and below, and how modern elites and scientists are aware of these truths, but choose to hide them from the public. The Bible provides clear answers, and as believers, we must be willing to stand for the truth, even when it is unpopular or ridiculed. Let us begin with a prayer asking the Lord to open our eyes to his truth and to help us discern the lies of the enemy. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with humble hearts, seeking your truth in a world full of deception. Open our eyes to the reality of your creation as described in your word and give us the courage to stand firm in the truth. Help us to see through the lies that have been fed to us by the world and give us the wisdom to discern your ways. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The Bible is not vague or unclear when it describes the nature of God's creation. From the very beginning, in the book of Genesis, we are given a detailed account of how God created the heavens and the earth. What is striking is that the description provided in Scripture is completely at odds with the modern scientific understanding of the earth as a globe spinning in space. Genesis 1-1-2 tells us, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This verse alone suggests that the earth was created with a surface, not as a ball or sphere, but as something flat, with waters covering its surface, as God continued his work of creation, he made a firmament to divide the waters. Genesis 1, 6, 7 says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. This firmament is described as a solid structure that holds back the waters above and creates a barrier between the heavens and the earth. The term firmament comes from the Hebrew word rakia, 
which means something that has been stretched out or hammered out like a sheet of metal. This clearly indicates that the firmament is not an open expanse of sky, but a solid protective dome. Genesis 1.9 continues, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Here, we see that the earth is flat and that the waters are gathered together beneath the firmament, creating dry land for mankind to inhabit. Nowhere in the creation account is there any indication of a spherical earth or the notion that we are orbiting around the sun. In fact, the Bible goes on to explain that the sun, moon, and stars were placed within the firmament, not outside of it. Genesis 1.14.16 says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. The sun, moon, and stars are within the firmament, and their purpose is to serve the earth. This completely contradicts the heliocentric model, which teaches that the earth revolves around the sun. The Bible clearly states that the sun and moon serve the earth and are placed within the firmament, not millions of miles away in space. Now that we have established the biblical foundation for a flat earth, we must address one of the greatest deceptions of our time, NASA and the so-called space program for decades, NASA has been the leading force behind the promotion of the heliocentric model, the belief that the Earth is a globe spinning in space, and that we are part of an infinite universe filled with other planets, stars, and galaxies. But what many people don't realize is that NASA is not what it seems. NASA's very mission is to deceive the world and to pull people away from the truth of God's Word. From the beginning, NASA has been involved in pushing the globe Earth narrative, using manipulated images and fabricated stories to convince people that space is an endless frontier to be explored. But here's the truth. NASA does not have real photographs of the Earth from space. What we're shown are CGI images, edited and stitched together to fit the globe model. NASA admits that their images are not actual photographs, but digital renderings. This alone should raise red flags for anyone who believes in the validity of their claims. Furthermore, when NASA launches rockets, we often hear the phrase T minus in the countdown. This phrase may seem innocent, but there is a hidden meaning behind it. The letter T is often associated with the cross in Christian symbolism. When NASA says T minus, it can be interpreted as an attempt to remove the cross or remove the truth of Jesus Christ from their mission. If you rearrange the letters in NASA, you get a chilling resemblance to the name Satan. This may seem far-fetched, but we must remember that the enemy operates in subtle ways, using deception to lead people away from God's truth. NASA's space program serves a greater purpose than simply exploring the heavens. It is part of a larger agenda to convince the world that the Bible's account of creation is false and that life on Earth is random and without purpose. By promoting the idea of a spinning globe in an infinite universe, NASA has successfully convinced millions of people that we are just one of many planets with no special place in creation. This directly contradicts the Bible, which tells us that the Earth is the center of God's creation and that mankind was created in his image. The lie of outer space is tied to the false teaching of evolution, which claims that life on Earth is the result of billions of years of random processes. By promoting the idea that we are just a tiny speck in an infinite universe, NASA and the scientific community have made it easier for people to believe that life has no meaning and that God does not exist. But the Bible tells us otherwise. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The firmament, the solid dome that covers the earth, 
is a testament to God's power and glory, not the result of random chance. The firmament is one of the most important aspects of the flat earth model, and it is mentioned repeatedly throughout the Bible. This solid structure was created by God to separate the waters above from the waters below, and it serves as a protective barrier over the earth. The firmament is not a metaphor. It is a literal physical structure that holds back the waters above and keeps the earth safe. In Genesis 7:11, we read about the great flood that occurred during the time of Noah. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. This verse suggests that the floodwaters came not only from the earth, but also from above, through windows or openings in the firmament. This is further evidence that the firmament is a physical structure, separating the waters above from the earth below. Modern scientists and world leaders are well aware of the firmament, even if they don't speak of it openly. We often hear phrases like breaking the glass ceiling or pushing the boundaries of space, and these could be understood as subtle references to attempts to breach the firmament. There have been countless missions, experiments, and even weapons, testing designed to explore the limits of the atmosphere. Yet no matter how much they attempt to penetrate it, the firmament remains intact as God designed it. The firmament is not only a protective barrier, it is also a reminder of God's authority over creation. Psalm 148, 4 says, Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. The waters above the firmament are not part of some distant galaxy. They are a real, tangible aspect of God's creation. The elites and scientists of the world are well aware of the firmament, and many of them even make veiled references to it in public speeches. But they choose to keep this knowledge hidden from the general public, because acknowledging the firmament would mean acknowledging the truth of the Bible. The deception of the globe Earth and the space program is closely tied to the theory of evolution. Both ideas are designed to replace the biblical account of creation with a godless, secular worldview. Evolution teaches that life on Earth is the result of random process over billions of years and that humans are merely the product of natural selection. This directly contradicts the Bible, which tells us that God created man in his own image and that we are not the result of chance, but of divine intention. The heliocentric model, the belief that the earth revolves around the sun, is a crucial part of the deception. By promoting the idea that the earth is just one of many planets orbiting the sun, the enemy has successfully convinced people that we are not the center of God's creation. This belief makes it easier for people to accept the idea of evolution and to reject the truth of the Bible. Genesis 1.27 tells us, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. We are not cosmic accidents. We are the intentional creation of a loving God. The heliocentric model and the theory of evolution are designed to make us feel insignificant, to believe that we are just one of many species in a vast, godless universe. But the Bible tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and that the earth is the center of God's creation. When we reject the lie of evolution and the globe earth, we begin to see the truth of God's creation more clearly. Isaiah 40:22 says, it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. This verse gives us a beautiful image of the flat earth, covered by the firmament like a tent, and God sitting above it all, reigning supreme. The enemy wants us to believe that we are insignificant, that the Bible's account of creation is a myth and that science has all the answers. But the truth is that the Bible gives us the most accurate detailed account of how the world was created, and we must trust in God's word above all else.
One of the greatest dangers of believing in the lies of the globe, earth, and evolution is the spiritual consequence of rejecting God's word. When we allow ourselves to be deceived by the world's narratives, we are in essence rejecting the authority of scripture. Second, Timothy 3, 16, 17 tells us, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The Bible is not just a book of spiritual wisdom. It is the literal truth of God's word, meant to guide us in every aspect of life, including our understanding of creation. By accepting the globe earth model and the theory of evolution, we are opening the door to further deception the enemy works subtly, using these lies to weaken our faith and make us question the truth of the Bible. Once we start doubting the creation account, it becomes easier to doubt other aspects of Scripture. This is why it is so important to stand firm in the truth of God's Word and to reject the lies of the world. Romans 1.21-22 warns us about the dangers of rejecting God's truth because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The world may claim to have all the answers, but in their rejection of God, they have become foolish. As believers, we must not fall into the same trap. We must glorify God in all things, including our understanding of his creation. As we come to the ending of this sermon, let us remember that the flat earth and the firmament are not just interesting theories. They are the truth of God's creation as revealed in the Bible. The world may mock and ridicule those who believe in a flat earth, but we know that God's word is the ultimate authority. Proverbs chapter three, verse five to six tells us, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. If we trust in God and his word, we will not be led astray by the lies of the world. We live in a time of great deception, but we are called to stand firm in the truth. Ephesians 6.14 reminds us, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. The enemy will continue to spread lies about the nature of God's creation, but we must be vigilant and stand for the truth, even when it is unpopular. As we dive deeper into the truth of God's creation and the deception that has been perpetuated for generations, it's important to continue seeking wisdom and understanding. The journey of uncovering the truth about the flat earth is not something that ends with a single sermon or a conversation. It's a continuous process of discovery, prayer, and reflection on God's Word. For those who are eager to explore this topic further and gain even more insight into the biblical foundations of the flat earth and the layers of deception that have been placed over our eyes, we are excited to introduce our new book, Awakening Righteousness, The Great Awakening of Truth Behind the Flat Earth. This book goes into greater detail, explaining the true biblical, historical, and scientific perspectives that have been hidden from the world. It's not just about debunking the false narratives we've been taught, but about awakening to the true nature of God's creation and how it affects our faith and our understanding of his plan for humanity. In the Awakening Righteousness book, you'll find a comprehensive breakdown of scripture that reveals the true nature of the earth and its firmament. Historical evidence showing how the flat earth understanding has been manipulated and hidden over centuries. A thorough examination of how modern science, the space program, and the theory of evolution have been used to lead people away from God's truth. Insights into the spiritual implications of believing in a flat earth and how it strengthens your faith in God's word. Practical advice on how to stand firm in the truth and help others see through the real deception. 
This book is an invaluable resource for those who want to deepen their understanding of this important topic and see the world through the lens of scripture. If you're ready to take the next step in your journey toward truth and righteousness, awakening righteousness. The great awakening of truth behind the flat earth is now available on Amazon. Check the link in the description below to purchase your copy today. Let this book be a real guide as you continue to seek the truth and stand firm in the knowledge that the Word of God is the ultimate authority in all things, including the very creation of the world itself. Thank you so much for watching today. We are excited to announce that Bible Adventures for Children is coming soon. This new series is designed to help children learn about the teachings of the Bible in a fun and engaging way. Some of the artistic artwork seen in this video will also be featured in the cartoon series. Please stay tuned for the release to help children, because as you know, the dark forces are targeting our children, and they are the future of our world, and of utmost importance to Jesus Christ. We now extend an invitation to you, not merely to support our ministry, but to become an integral part of our divine mission and purpose. Visit our website at awakeningrighteousness.com where you will discover a free blog, Christian canvas art, Christian clothing, and a vast range of Awakening Righteousness books that delve even deeper into the profound teachings of the Bible. Each book serves as a beacon, illuminating the path to awaken the righteous version of yourself. By standing with us, your support breathes life into our ministry, enabling us to truly understand the teachings of the Bible and ignite faith in many hearts. You have the power to contribute to the saving of souls and to make a real difference on earth. Stay blessed, awaken the righteous version of yourself, and join us in this holy mission of saving souls. I love you. I'm here to help you as much as I can. May God bless you and guide you on your walk with Jesus Christ. God be with you. Amen. Thank you.